The domination game with one or more domination boxes is simple to run and simple to explain. Because every second counts in regards to controlling the centrally located domination box, gamers are propelled forward from the first second of the game until the last. Teams receive unlimited respawns from their bases. The result is every gamer plays the entire time, no one sits out. Domination works well for any type of group on any battlefield. Supply crates act as secondary objectives and should be placed on one or more flanks. With less than 10 gamers use just one supply crate, otherwise have one on each flank. The domination box should be put in the center of the battlefield. With more than 50 gamers, use three domination boxes as well as two supply crates. Domination also works well with three teams when only one domination box is used. The domination box is placed equally distant from each team. Normally this is in the center of the battlefield but can be in a corner as long as it is fair for both teams. The domination box must be out of line of sight from each team's base. We want the gamers to advance towards the domination box, not shoot it from their base. Typically, two domination games are run back to back without a break. After the first game, the teams change ends. The change ends phrase found in the post game menu is very useful to get the gamers moving. After changing ends, remember to change the team setting on each medic box. Normally the medic box is actually a combination box. Supply crates are positioned equidistant from each team's base on the flanks. Here is an example of a mission briefing for the domination mission. We are going to run two 15-minute domination missions. This is a domination box, it has two timers, one for red team and one for blue team. When you shoot the box, your timer begins, when the other team shoots the box, your timer stops and their timer starts. You have to hit the sensor on the top of the box, so you will need to get in close. The team that has the most amount of time at the end of the game wins. You can tell your team is in control by the color of the light flashing, if the light is flashing red, red team is in control, if it is flashing blue. Blue team is in control. If you're already in control, don't try to hit the box, instead drive back the other team so they can't hit the box. Every 10 seconds the box will also announce which team is in control. Note, that no one is to move any of the boxes. The medic boxes will provide unlimited respawns. When the mission ends, the box will announce the winner. You can also tell which team has won by the color of the flashing light. Supply crates are positioned on each flank. It is very important to gain these supplies and keep them away from the opposition. Tactical tip, when your team has the box don't waste bullets shooting it, however as soon as it is lost, shoot it. This is the simplest mission to run and explain to the gamers. The team with the most kills, wins. To work out who won, first compare the number of respawns each team has used. The best way to see the respawn count, is the monitor devices from the master controller, where you select combination box to return the team letter and the number of respawns. If the spawn counts are not close, then the team with the fewest respawns wins. If the score is close, collect the gamers together by team and count how many were dead on each team when the mission ended. You can see the red hit light stays on if the gamer is dead. 
the team's dead is added to the number of respawns used to get a total kill count for the opposition team. Supply crates should be positioned equidistant from the teams and fairly central to the battlefield. These will act like secondary objectives. For a team deathmatch, the briefing goes like this. Okay. Listen up. We are running a 15 minute team deathmatch. You have 15 minutes to kill the opposition team as much as possible while ensuring your team doesn't die in the attempt. Keep your eyes up, hide, and keep a lookout for any and all opposition. You have unlimited respawns to assist you, but remember each time you are killed is one more point to the opposition. Controlling at least one supply crate is vital for your success, the team with the best weapons. Medical supplies and shields is likely to win. SATAR 3 offers support for an electronic capture the flag mission. This mission runs for a fixed period of time so you can stay on schedule. Both teams receive unlimited respawns from their bases, so everyone plays the entire time. An important consideration for the CO is the position of the flag boxes in relation to the team starting points. Typically, the flag boxes are diagonally opposite each other and the team bases are also diagonally opposite each other. This should form a lopsided rectangular shape, where the defender's flag box is near their medic box, but is not directly in line with it. The flag boxes shouldn't be too easy to defend. Place the flag boxes in forward positions as shown on the conceptual map. Set the team on each flag box. Looking at the conceptual map, you can see the red box will be set to red team with the letter A, and the blue box set to blue team with letter B. Remember, when you change ends, set both the combination box and the home flag box to the new team. Gamers capture a flag by shooting the other team's flag box. When they succeed in this, their gaming gun says flag captured, and their hit lights flash red and blue. Multiple flags can be in play at any one time. The gamer with a flag must then return to their own team's flag box and shoot it, to score one flag. The gaming gun will then say, flag returned. The team with the most number of flags in their flag box wins. To view the score, use the master controller's monitor device and choose flag box. The display will show the team and the score, making it easy to see which team is winning, and at the end of the game, who was victorious. A single supply crate should be placed, in the center of the battlefield equidistant from each team's base. Here is an example briefing for electronic capture the flag. Okay. Listen up. We are running a 15 minute capture the flag mission. Each team has a flag box. To score a point you need to shoot the other team's flag box, then without being killed, get back to your flag box and shoot it. When you shoot the opposition's flag box your gaming gun will say flag captured. When you successfully return a flag to your flag box your gaming gun will say flag returned. A team can have multiple flags in play at the same time. When a gamer has a flag, both hit lights in the head sensor will be flashing. If you see an opposition gamer with a flag, try to kill them before they get away. Unlimited respawns are available from your base. Weapons, aids and ammunition are available from the supply crate in the center of the battlefield. Let's do it. The idea of this mission is each team tries to collect money and deposit that into their team's vault. Money can be collected three ways, either you shoot the money drop box, kill an opponent that is carrying money, or, and this is the clincher stealing money from the other team's vault. A money drop box should be positioned in a similar way to a domination box, so all teams have an even chance to collect money from it. 
the money drop needs to be configured via the common menu before the mission starts. Similarly, each team's vault needs to be configured. It is important each vault is set to a team. Vaults should be positioned nearby the team's medic box or the vault itself can be configured to provide respawns. A quick way to set the money drop and vaults to recommended settings is to use the resets like red vault, for the red team's vault, and money drop. A vault reset will also provide respawns to the same team. This mission works with up to four teams. In the four-team scenario rotate each team 90 degrees after each game, and run four games. Perfect for a corporate function. Here is an example of a briefing for the heist. Listen your goal for this mission is to steal as much money as possible in 15 minutes. In the bank, found in the center of the battlefield, is a money drop box. Shoot the money drop box to steal any money available. Every 10 seconds more money will be added to the money drop box. The money drop box will flash blue when funds are available. Once you have money, return to your team's vault. Watch out, the other team can steal some of your money from the vault. If you do manage to kill a gamer who is carrying money, you receive half of it. Unlimited respawns are available from your base. Weapons, aids and ammunition are available from the supply crates. May the best gang win. With Battle Royale mission, the goal is to be the last survivor. This can be a free for all or team based. Three or four teams is the recommended option. As there are no respawns, games should be short. A maximum of 8 minutes is long enough to get a result, typically it is all over in 5 to 6 minutes. End the mission with the controller when there is only one team left that has survivors. The circle is shrunk every minute by default. Anyone outside the zone will get two warnings and after that will take 20 points of damage every 5 seconds. Damage is done by radio. Cover that dramatically affects radio range will reduce the size of the circle. To make sure everyone that is outside the circles takes damage, make sure at least one radio repeater with a whip antenna is positioned centrally in a high position, such as on top of a building. Supply crates should be positioned around the central area. The controller reset supply crate can be used to quickly set the supply crate to the default settings. A battle royale box marks the center of the circle. It should be located off the ground and where possible on high ground to maximize the distance of the initial circle. The controller can be used to quickly configure the battle royale box to the recommended settings by selecting the royale box reset. To create multiple safe zones, especially useful with a really large game on a large battlefield, employ battle royale boxes configured to act as boosters. Before each mission collect all the gamers around the battle royale box, explain this is the center and then tell them they have 30 seconds to find a starting position. Because there are no respawns, don't run this first. Instead run at least two missions like Domination or Capture the Flag before proceeding to Battle Royale. The next mission is Battle Royale, the goal is to be the last team alive. Watch out, there are no respawns. You can start anywhere you like within the battlefield to a distance of 60 to 70 meters. If you go any further you will be outside the safe circle and will take 20 points of damage every 5 seconds. The circle will shrink, once per minute. While you're in the circle you will hear a beep every 5 seconds. If you're outside the circle, you will hear two warnings, before you start taking damage. Weapons, aids and ammunition are available from the supply crates. Find and control these to aid in your survival. This mission will run for a maximum of 8 minutes.